from cop to call girl. You traded in your ticket book for a trick book, I guess. Well, I guess you got, but I don't. I never called them tricks. They were clients. I see. But uh, I just traded a, a dishonest job for an honest one. You think you were dishonest as a police officer? No, I think the job was dishonest. Why? Well, I worked Hollywood, and of course, during the time I was there, the ongoing corruptions, the Hollywood burglary ring, um, the cops were having sex with underage explorer scouts, they had a murder for hire ring, things like that. And my being there, I, I was so embarrassed to tell people where I worked because they kept saying, uh, well, gee, uh, you know, <laughs> don't come to my house. You know, what are you going to steal? Things like that. So I was very embarrassed to work for them, and I, I felt I had to get out and do something more honest. And so you became a prostitute. Right. How did you do that? Well, technically, I was already a prostitute. According to the law, the definition is a lewd act for money or other consideration. A person who commits that is a prostitute. And whenever I would go into the sergeant's office and ask to get off work early, and I'd sit on his lap and blow in his ear, uh, the consideration was getting off work earlier or getting the next day off or whatever. And it was a lewd act. So technically, I was already a prostitute. I just decided to be honest about it and say, instead of going out for a, couple of, a cup of coffee or dinner with a cop that was married and then going home and having sex, I was going to get paid the $200 an hour for it. Did you stay in Hollywood and ply your trade there after you left the police department? Well, mostly not. Mostly I worked in Beverly Hills. That's where most of the clients were that I had. Now, you authored a book about this career of yours, mm -hmm. and I understand the manuscript has been taken. Yes, it was taken in 1983 during a sting operation in which the police set me up to, to specifically get that manuscript. Um, they used a friend of mine who was on the police department, a 50-year-old, 6-foot-2, 230-pound woman, who was going to leave the police department when I could afford her and come and be my personal secretary. Well, she expressed a fantasy to me of being a call girl, which is not uncommon. And uh, I went to find a client for her, and I paid the man to see her, and I called her up with the information, and she happened to be wired. Um, by that you mean by, she kept... She was, no, she was, she was wired. This was mm -hmm. a setup in, in mm -hmm. order for the police to be able to confiscate It was a secret manuscript. recording made of your conversation. Right, right. And so the police came in, uh, seven of them with their guns drawn, and they came in and confiscated the manuscript. All I had to do for this, this crime was to encourage a person to commit an act of prostitution. That's all you have to do. In, in other words, if you just simply say, um, I like what I did, uh, you ought to try it that could be construed as pandering and that is a felony with a mandatory state prison term of three to six years on the first offense with no prior convictions. Did you go to prison? Yes, I did. I was sent to state prison for uh, 50 days to be studied to see if I was dangerous to the community and then the judge decided that since I was not dangerous that he would give me probation. The probation is now being appealed by the district attorney's office on the grounds that um, the crime I committed is worse than rape or robbery because, well, number one, because of the person that I am, I'm, I'm writing this book that's causing uh, disrespect for law and order, and I'm causing the police department public ridicule, and they think that because of this, I'm a worse criminal than someone who would commit rape or robbery or a violent crime against someone else. In your book, do you name names? Uh, no, I never had planned to name names, but of course they didn't know that. But I am planning to, you know, be specific about incidences and things that I saw happen, things that were in the paper. And, uh, and of course, there are a lot of people in this country who weren't aware of what was going on in Hollywood. And I would like people to know, not just simply because it happened, but because I think the only way change can ever come about is if people are informed and and then they can make decisions and change things. Where's your original manuscript now? Do you know? It's still in the hands of the police department. Uh, although I've been to trial and I've been convicted of the one count of pandering, uh, the, and the, the police, since they are appealing my probation, they still have the manuscript. They maintain that they need this manuscript for whatever reason. I don't know. They never used it in the trial. They never used it as evidence. But, of course, I have a lawsuit against them to get it back, and also that they took it in the first place. It was a violation of my First Amendment rights. If you never see that manuscript again, will you be able to write your book still? Oh, absolutely. I have been working on rewriting the book ever since they took it. Um, they can't take away the, the, the things I saw and things I know, They can't unless they take away my mind, which I don't think they can do. Um, but they took a lot of research notes that I had, and, and it was a couple of years' worth of work. And uh, so it was really a lot of work that they took away from Norma me. Norma Jean, what are you doing now? Right now I'm getting ready to run for office. <laughs> You're going to run for office? Yes. What are you going to run for? Well, I'm a libertarian and I'm running for the office of lieutenant governor for the state of California. Do you think that the people of California are ready for a former prostitute to be a lieutenant governor? Well, if they can... Uh, put a former police chief in office, <laughs> and I consider that to be dishonest profession, uh, I don't see why they, they wouldn't uh, elect someone who 
says and believes that they have a right to do with their body as they choose, mm -hmm. as long as they're How are you adults. earning a living now? Um, well, I sell my t-shirts, and I do speak at colleges and things like that. You sell t-shirts? Um, the t-shirts that, that go with the book. Oh, I see. Yes. But the, there's no book, but you sell the t-shirts right. to it. Right, yes. Well, there'll, there'll be a and book. It says from pop to call girl <laughs> right. on it? Mm -hmm. Okay, and tries to, it tries to sell the book for you. I think so, yes. Well, Norma Jean, thank you so much for being so candid. Well, thank you very much. We're going to be right back right after this.